What is up all of you awesome and amazing people on YouTube? Kudum Below here coming at you with another exciting video. There's my, whatchamacallit, the thumbnail thingy. I think I'm going to try to use it. Let's see what happens. Anyways, Tom Shoe wood burning stove does fit. It does fit into the MSR 775 milliliter casserole pot. I am using a Trangia bioethanol burning stove inside of here. I can also use wood pellets. We're going to try to do all that this weekend. So stay tuned for another exciting video sometime this weekend that'll be posted up. And I found a way to buy, to purchase bioethanol fuel relatively inexpensively. I think it's cleaner burning. I think it's better than using heat. I know a lot of people use that in here. It's definitely way better, way cleaner burning than like, say your whatever your high percentage of alcohol is. Like some people use 80, 90, whatever, 95% alcohol. I think the bioethanol just is cleaner burning. It's more efficient. I think you get a cleaner burn that is not as toxic or harmful to the environment. So that's one really good thing. Okay. So links to all the stuff will be down in the description there down below. So make sure to check out that description section. There will be a link to everything here that you see. Also, now's a good time to hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button if you like what you're seeing and let's get into the video. Okay. So Tom Shoe, here's your wood burning stove, right? This is what comes in the box, like directions. So here's your wood burning stove instructions or kind of suggestions of how to put it together. You can always do whatever you want. Everything is modular. It uses a nesting type system where one thing fits into another, fits into another. You get the idea. Okay, so there's wood stove, solidified alcohol stove. You could use a Nesbit with this if you kind of catch that drift. Then you've got all your different options here. Okay, so that's basically that. Here's this, there's a good screenshot of that. Okay, so now coming back on the back side, here's another folding and packing idea like of how you wanna put this together when you wanna put it together. These two things are the same thing. I don't know why they showed the picture twice, but you only get one of these saucer things. You do not get two of them, so keep that in mind. So there's your Tom shoe. Okay, so let's open the box. What's in the box? Okay, so you open the box, right? What you're going to see is you're going to see this netting. This comes with the Tom shoe. It's a double net material. It feels pretty solid. I know there were some complaints on other videos that I saw like, oh, there's a tear. There's a loose thread. There's a whatever. Mine came pretty good. So I guess it's luck of the draw, whatever you get. You do get this little cinch cord thingamajiggy, whatever that thing's called. So there you go. So, so the Tom shoe will come in this. And then your MSR, my MSR just came in a little plastic bag. I didn't even have a box for the MSR. That was kind of weird. But anyways, there's the MSR pot, 775 milliliter. The pot alone weighs 13 ounces. I would say this total setup with the Trangia inside weighs maybe four to five pounds, like somewhere in that ballpark if I had to ballpark it. So this isn't necessarily for saving weight. It's more about saving space, right? Like everything nests into itself. One thing I will say is if you're a firebox person, this this whole setup weighs way less than a complete stainless steel firebox. So if you're trying to save two pounds and get more compactability and get a Trangia in there and get the pot, I would say this could be an option for you, right? Just something to think about. Okay, so this unlatches, right? This part comes out. Let me move my Trangia bottle. The way the handle just holds itself is this will click down, like it clicks. And then once it clicks, you kind of have to wrestle it back to get it to fold back over again. But the good news is that picking this up with four pounds or so, four and a half pounds or so in here, the handle does hold up pretty nicely. So if you're over a barbecue, you're cooking, you're over a stove, whatever you're doing, whatever, just know that the handle is going to hold. Okay, so lid comes off, lid comes off. And now we start getting into the components of the Tom shoe, right? All the stuff that was in this thing, it's all nested in there. So you've got this cross thing that you can use to stabilize a pot if you want to use that. Depending on how small your pot is, like if you're using the, uh, what is it? Those 500 milliliter or 750 milliliter, those tall pots that you see or cups, the Stanleys. There's a whole bunch that are out there. There's a whole bunch of Chinese companies that are out there as well. But anyways, you get the idea. Here's my Trangia. I usually do not put any fuel in here when I'm transporting it. I'm just worried it's going to leak and I don't want it to be in there. And then that's why I have the Trangia bottle, which will also be down in the link there down below. If you're curious, the red bottle that you see online or wherever it is usually is for your ethanol, bioethanol. 
If you wanted to use heat, if that was your option, you can. I'm just not a fan of yellow heat anymore. I know I showed it in another video, but I'm just not a fan of it. I think it's too toxic. The fumes are obnoxious. I like the bioethanol better. It works better in here. The green bottle, if you see it, if you ever see the green one, the green one is more of like your white gas, gasoline, that kind of vibe. If you're using it with like a whisper light or if you're using it with, uh, what's the other one? The Primus Prime, I think, or whatever. Anyways, you get the idea. So my fuel's going in here. This is the, I believe this is a 300 milliliter size. So it's kind of small, but it's kind of, uh, it's kind of got a good capacity to it. Yeah, this is the 300 milliliter size. I'm trying to see if I can show it to you on here itself. But anyways, these things are built like tanks. I mean, this is like the good, thick quality plastic, not the flimsy stuff, but these are like really dense, thick plasticky bottles. You do have an aluminum ring around here, which kind of holds and gives shape to and strength to this top part. This is removable if you decide to take this off. Basically, you unscrew this, you push down, and then your, your fuel would come out either one side or the other. The reason why there's two spouts is one is the air intake to replace the volume of water that's coming, or the volume of fuel, I should say, that's coming out the other side. And then you do have a little place here to clip like a carabiner or some paracord. I, I don't think I would ever use that, but if you wanted to figure out a way to do that, go for it. Paracord to a carabiner to whatever you could hang this. I don't know. Do your own thing. Anyways, back to the video. So the lid came off. This is where we're at now, right? You had these two little cross hatch piece thingies. I'll show you how to put that together in a minute. My Trangia is going to come out, right? So my Trangia comes out and you saw that you could put the Trangia in there and still have room for everything else. Okay, then this is your top part. This actually goes like this. This is where you would foot, you would feed wood pieces into or wood pellets. I'm going to show you that in a future video coming up this weekend. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Then you've got your, your ash catch tray. This is also where you would put your Nesbit. If you didn't want to use a Trangia, you could put just straight up fuel in here. Whether you want to use the bioethanol, ethanol, if you wanted to use the heat, if you wanted to use the alcohol, whatever. I just like the bioethanol because I think it's cleaner burning, right? And it's a little bit safer in terms of like it's not as noxious of fumes, that kind of vibe. Okay, so that goes in there. Then you've got your ash or wood holder. Is that what you would want to call it? So like this, this in the in the stack goes on top of this. So all your ashes fall through. But I like this great pattern because it allows for ventilation so air can come up through and kind of help to get the fire going, all that kind of stuff. You get the idea. So that's in there. Then you've got two rings. You've got an outer ring. This one is your base. And then you've got an inner ring. This one is, isn't that weird? Like if you do it this way, it just fits right on top. But if you do it the other way, the way that it's I guess uh, machined is then this fits on top of this. Okay, so there you go. So there's that. And then here's your little grill, which also comes with the Tom shoe. Let's see if I can get this out in one piece. Okay, so basically the way this works is when you open it up, you just open it up and then now you're ready to put something on top of here. Don't do it this way because otherwise this will fold back on itself and you'll drop all of your food. Hamburger. It's about the size. I would say this is about like maybe somewhere between five and six inches across. So it's about the size of like one really huge hamburger patty. You could fit a half a ribeye steak on there, which I will actually show you in a second. Here, there you go. I'm defrosting my ribeye. So there you go. There, <laughs> there's your grill on top of your ribeye. You, you're not going to get the whole thing on there, right? Almost. But you can definitely do like a half a side and then save a little piece for later and do another half a side if you wanted to do that or like a huge hamburger patty. Anyways, you get the idea. So there's your little grill thingy. So we'll, put, we'll set that aside for now. So now let's build up the stove. So try to put this on something like the floor, like ground, dirt, right? A rock, a boulder, something that can accept the heat because once this thing heats up, especially if you're using wood pellets, or if you're using tree branches with bark, whatever's around you, that kind of, you get the idea, something that'll burn newspaper. I've heard, of, I've heard of people using newspaper. I think they use soybean ink, right? They make the ink from soybean. So it's not as, I guess, harmful as burning like cardboard. Like I, I wouldn't try to do cardboard in there. Just noxious fumes. Trying to think ahead, people. Okay, 
So this whole thing heats up really bad. So try to put this on top of a rock, the ground, you know, maybe like a, a huge tree stump, right? That people cook on anyways or whatever. But you get the idea. So this goes like this. Let's say you are going to do the Trangia setup. What you do is you invert this this way and the machining, right? The curling of the metal right there keeps this from falling all the way through. So once it's in there, that's going to be where it's at. Then what you would do is you could do your Trangia, right? Set it to where you like it. So this would be like a simmer. Maybe that would be like a full blown boil or whatever. But let's say you get it in there. This goes on top, right? So this piece goes on top. So now you're all set, right? And now you have room in here. I really wouldn't, I would try to set it before you light it. That's the most important tip. I think I'm gonna tell everybody when using a transient because once this thing is lit and it's hot, forget it, it's almost impossible to adjust. But just to show you there is room, right? There is room in there if you wanted to adjust this however you wanted to. I think if you came in from the side, see how it all fits and you still have even more room to go. <clears throat> so there you go. So you can do something like that. Let me get some more light going on in here. Okay, there we go. So you get the idea. So you could you could have it open this much, maybe this much, depending on the angle. And then if you wanted to simmer it down or start with the simmer, you could obviously go to as simmery as you wanted to simmer. Okay, so you get the idea. Now what you could do is because this thing is stable now, this thing is solid as a rock pretty much, and hopefully you're cooking on a rock, like a flat surface. Now you can put your MSR on top, boom, there's your pot, and now you're cooking, right? So you're cooking, 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 there you go, there's a nice little screenshot right there for you. So there you go, you're cooking away. Or you could barbecue. Like I said, I would, I would not use the Trangia to barbecue that steak. What I would do is I would take this out, I would put my wood pellets in there. So let me show you that setup. So what you do is you just flip this inner piece, let me show you that. So this goes, this goes back the way it was, right? Here's your base. Now what you do is you have your saucer to catch your ashes or whatever. So that goes down on the bottom, right? So if you're cooking on the ground itself, at least, you, at least you've got something between the stove and the coals hitting the actual ground itself. So now this part goes in, right? This piece. And instead of putting it in this way, we're going to put it in this way. So that goes in there. So now I've got everything stacked up, right? So it's the it's the ash catcher thing. Then you've got the base, right? Then you've got your little tray, vented tray there to keep the air flowing through the system for your wood pellets or for your tree branches or whatever. So then this piece goes on top, right? So now you've got, I would say from the bottom of that piece to the to like right about here or so, is probably about six inches, like six or seven inches or so. And then this right here is about an inch and a half, maybe just shy of like two inches tall, like an inch and three quarter or something like that. So now what you could do is now you could barbecue, right? On your wood burning stove, you could barbecue that ribeye steak, or you could put your MSR on top, right? Not a bad system, not a bad system. So that would be that setup. Let's say you, you know that you've been cooking with this and your flame isn't quite as high as you want it to be for whatever reason. You could theoretically flip this and do it this way, right? You could put wood right there, put this back on top, and then now you're a little bit closer to your wood. Like let's say you know you're only going to boil one cup of water and you don't want to get a raging, you know, cauldron of flame going in this thing because you're just going to boil one cup of water. You could do it this way. You would have, I'd say you'd have about like that much, like about one inch. You'd have about one inch from the bottom of this to here. And then from here, you'd have another inch and a half. So let's say two and a half inches of distance. So let's say you're just trying to get more of a controlled flame going or whatever. You could do that kind of system. If you really want to go crazy, what you could do is take your saucer thing or whatever, put that in here. And now you can put your Nesbit in there. You could put your liquid fuel in there, whatever you want to do. Or you could do it this way, right? If you want it a little more stable. So there's that. And then you could put this on top. Everything is modular. That's the beauty of this whole system. You could put bioethanol in there, your alcohol. If you wanted to use your yellow heat, red heat, whatever, 
which I'm shying away from. Bioethanol is the way to go. You could do that, right? So now let's say you want to do the Trangia thing. You have two options. This, right? That gets you a little bit closer to your cooking surface. Right, right, right. You can adjust the flame. You can do whatever you got to do. Like I said, I would try to adjust this before you start, before you light it or whatever. Kind of gives you an idea. You know, experiment. Test the stuff out at home. Try it out. See what works. But there you go. So then that's that. And then the very last thing I was going to show you was if you have a smaller stove. I'm just going to do this with one hand. This will be interesting. <clears throat> if you have a smaller stove, let's see. I have to pause for a second. Oh, here. I can pause. Okay, hold on. Okay, and we're back. So th these two fit inside of themselves. Ah, I think I just lost it. Might have to pause again, but oh, if this works. Okay, perfect. So you get the idea. So that goes into there. So now you can put your pot on top of this, right? So if I do this correctly, take that out, flip this part. Let's see. Do -do -do. There you go. So here's your, if you're going to do the wood burning system, all this would go down inside. You'd have your wood going. You could do this. <laughs> so it's an angle thing, trying to get the right angle. What am I missing? I'm missing something. Oh, that's right. Wait. Oops. Hold on. Got to do this. Okay. Got to do this. And then you do this. There you go. All right. Is that right? Right. Like that. I think. Is that all right? And through the miracle of television, we're back. Okay, so, <laughs> so I just had it at the wrong angle. But basically, you get the idea. And that's that's how you learn. You learn by screwing up. So now, basically, you understand that... And I understand that these crosshatch piece... This is a hole here, right? So you can feed your fire. Your stove goes on top. So now you can still feed your fire. This is pretty stable now. I mean, this is pretty rock solid. Like, I'm shaking on this, and it's pretty rock solid. It is pretty stable. So if you decide to use it this way, there you go. If you wanted to do it the Trangia way, right? So this would come out again. This goes upside down. Here goes your Trangia. Here goes this. Modularity, modularity. So there you go. So these would basically be inside of your flame, right? Because if your Trangia is right here, not too much distance, but if you wanted to simmer, you get the idea. There's your pot on top. So there's your total stack right there, right? Pot, this is your base, this is your thing, this is your thing. In this kind of configuration, if you really were trying to block the wind or whatever, I guess as long as you were on a solid platform, right? Either the ground, maybe an old tree stump or something that everybody cooks on anyway, or just something that isn't going to combust from the heat of all this, you could theoretically do something like this, right? If you're using, if you're just using the Trangia, you could just do that. And that would be your setup. The only problem is this, like I'm still trying to figure out, let's experiment. You know, let's see if you can get this as a windscreen. No, that, that wouldn't work because that falls through. I'm trying to see how you could get this to where, and that's gonna fall through too. But anyways, I guess you could experiment. You could experiment a little bit and see what you can figure out to maybe try to get to use this as a windscreen. Hey, that would be a note for Tom Shoe, right? Maybe you can make something. Who knows? I guess you guys can, can experiment on your own. Rolled up piece of tinfoil, maybe? Just get a piece of tinfoil that's like yay tall. That'll be taller. That would be good. Anyways, you get the idea. This video is getting way too long. So with that being said, there are links in the description there down there below. Make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you like what you're seeing. Stay tuned this weekend, probably Sunday-ish. I'm going to post up, maybe Saturday night-ish, I'm going to post up a video of this actually in the field cooking and working and doing its thing. And I'll try to do it both ways. I'll try to do one video where I have the Trangia going, and then I'll, have, I'll do another video where I'm using either wood pellets or wood sticks or something similar, blocks of wood.